Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this session of uh, with the Department of Management Science and Engineering in the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Waterloo. Today, we want to explain everything that you need to know to be part of this department, taking the master's and PhD program. So who is here today to explain you everything about this uh, department and graduate studies? Uh, we have Sibel. She is an associate professor and she is the associate chair of graduate studies in this department of management science and engineering. We have Brian. He is the professor and he is a director of the online MMSC MOT program. Uh, in the Department of Management Science and Engineering. You will understand just in a bit what does it mean, what, what, what is the meaning of this MMSC, Master of Management Science and MOT, Management of Technology Program. We also have Professor Mark. He will be your professor if you are here at the university in uh, also the Department of Management Science and Engineering. And I'm your host, I am Maria Sandoval. I am uh, the Marketing and Recruitment Specialist for Graduate Studies in the Engineering Graduate Studies Office in the Faculty of Engineering. What are you gonna learn today? What are the programs, admission requirements, deadlines to apply, what makes a good application, how to find a supervisor, research areas in management science and engineering, uh, and funding and awards. Just to remember, the University of Waterloo and the Faculty of Engineering is a top is a top faculty recognized all over the world, is a leader in industry uh, connections. The soul of the University of Waterloo is uh, entrepreneurship, new ideas, something that is current in the market. So we are always connected with the industry. We have top labs, institutes, and centers. We will need like an entire <laughs> new session to talk only about the labs, institutes, and centers. So, but you can be sure that you will be joining a university that has all these um, facilities available for you. We also are a top ranking school, uh, the University of Waterloo and the Faculty of Engineering itself. So you will be taking that reputation in that degree with you in your CV. We also have clubs and associations many of them. Yeah, we understand that this is not only about coming to study, but how your life is going to be, what kind of connections you're going to have. You need to have fun. <laughs> so there are many activities as well that you're going to have here in the University of Waterloo. Also remember that only in Waterloo, your ideas are your intellectual property. So 100% of the ideas developed at Waterloo are owned by the creators. Our policy on intellectual property gives both faculty and students complete ownership over their ideas and technology. So if you come, if you're one of these smart, very smart people, you have one idea that's going to change the world, then uh, if you bring that idea, that belongs to you, not to university, not to the professor. So you have full control to patent your, your idea, to license your idea, commercialize it, or even start your own company. That's one of several reasons why you see so many entrepreneurs coming from the University of Waterloo. So now, just knowing when are you coming, so let's just talk about more about the department itself. Um, we're going to show you what are the steps that you need to apply for the Department of Management Science and Engineering. So, Sibel, go ahead. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. So, uh, as Maria introduced, I'm Sibel Alumrole. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Management Science and Engineering, and I would like to talk about our programs. So first of all, let me introduce what Management Science and Engineering is. Well, it is a broad interdisciplinary study of problem solving and decision making in human organizations. We use a combination of analytical models and behavioral sciences to address society's most complex problems. Well, we try to just give a broad definition of what it is, but hopefully you'll learn more when you join our program. Next, uh, I would like to talk about our graduate programs in our department. Let me start with the uh, GDIP. It means Graduate Diploma in Data Analytics. So this is a standalone graduate diploma. It's not a master's degree. It's not a PhD degree. It's just a diploma. and. You, to, to get this diploma, you need to enroll in four courses, which takes approximately two terms. One term at the University of Waterloo is about four months, so you can get this diploma in eight months. Then we have this course-based master's degrees. We call them MMSC, which is short for Master of Management Sciences. And we have 
two types of delivery. We have an online MMSC management of technology program, which Professor Kozarin will talk about in a bit. And we also have this in-person MMSC programs. So both of these programs, actually you need to take eight courses, but the courses are a bit different in between the online and in-person programs. We'll come back to that in the next slide. But let me now talk about the in-person MMSC programs. So I say programs because there's a co-op direct entry too. So if you want to do a co-op, cooperative education, you can also apply the MMSC co-op program starting from this fall. We have a direct entry for the co-op or you can apply to both programs if you like. Co-op co is what we call co cooperative learning. It's a work integrated learning. You are, I will come back to co-op actually in a couple of slides, but it's maybe to elaborate. Uh, you are being, you're getting paid working in a company while uh, studying. It's in, in, independent from the uh, courses that you're taking. So one term, one term is about approximately four months, as I mentioned, is dedicated uh, for your co-op term as dedicated uh, term. And you ask, you, um, find a co-op position, which we help at the university, for you to be paid during this time and working at the company. Re to uh, let everyone know that Waterloo, in terms of the entire world, we have the largest co-op program. There's a full-time option as well as a part-time option for our course-based program, MMSC program. Uh, so full-time option comes with a co-op too. With the co-op, it takes about two years. If you don't enroll in COP, it's about a one year program. If it's part time, it takes a little bit longer. Then we have the research based master's degree, which we call as Master of Applied Science, MASC degree. And you need to take four courses for this program, but you also need to complete a thesis. This, is, this program takes two years if you're enrolled in full time. It takes more if you're enrolled part time. And there's a co-op option for this program as well. And there's a direct entry for co-op too. And you can also switch to the co-op after your enrollment. This program is fully funded. And so to be able to be accepted for this program, a supervisor needs to accept you. I'll come back to that as well. For the application, you don't need to select the supervisor up front, but to be accepted, the supervisor needs to agree to work with you. For the PhD program, you need to take again four courses. It's the thesis program and it takes four years, more years for the part time. There is not a co-op option for the PhD. And as, as I told you before, these MASC and PhD programs are more research oriented. So there's research and academic career possibilities as well. Whereas in the other programs, you can work in the industry afterwards or hopefully start up your own country, company if you're interested. So let me now give the word to Professor Kozarin, who is the director of the MSC uh, online MOT program. Okay, thank you. Um... Let me just say that, uh, reiterate what uh, Professor Sabal just said, is that this is a part-time program. Uh, all of our students work full-time and uh, they all typically, well not all, but most of them typically have a STEM background uh, who are in the program and they work in a functional area. So if you look on the left-hand side there of the table, you'll see some, some different roles that we have, uh, we've admitted process quality improvement consultant, business process specialist type of thing. And then on the right-hand column, those are not matched, by the way, to the left-hand column. They're just, that's just a separate column. And this is where they end up. So in other words, they become managers and they, they typically remain in a functional role. So unlike an MBA program where uh, the objective will be to enter the C-suite and potentially become a president or vice president, uh, our students want to remain in their functional roles, so become something like uh, technical operations manager and director, director of engineering and manufacturing, that kind of thing. Uh, another thing I should mention is cost. Uh, about half of the students uh, do get um, some compensation from their employer. Sometimes the employer will pay for the whole degree. 
And the interesting thing about our degree is that uh, an MBA is at least four times more than ours. So it's quite expensive in comparison. And uh, yeah, it's also an, uh, a rolling admission process. So if you look on the right where the arrow is, the intake is in uh, spring term, fall term or winter term. Uh, so it's quite flexible. As, as Brian mentioned, the uh, online MSc program has a different intake timeline. So that's why we highlighted here that it's different. Uh, so basically the application deadlines are six months before the beginning of the term. Our terms begin in, uh, the fall term begins in um, September and the winter term begins in January and the spring term begins in May. So, and these are the application deadlines. So if you would like to join us in uh, fall 2024, you have to apply by February 1st, 2024. And if you want to join us in next January, 2025, you have to apply by June 1st, 2024. And for the spring intake, again, you have to apply by October 1st, 2024. You must submit all required documents for your application which I'm coming right to as a step two, understanding our admission requirements. So here's again uh, a table uh, which uh, summarizes our minimum admission requirements. So let's again start from the left and move towards right, if you may. Uh, for the uh, graduate diploma, as well as MMSC and all of our masters, we require a minimum average of 75% where for the PhD degree, we ask uh, an 83% minimum average. Just so you know, but this is the minimum requirement. So the more, the better here. So the, your chances of getting accepted is uh, higher if you have a better average. For the GDIP, uh, we don't ask a prior degree, but for the master's program, we need a four years honors bachelor's degree. Honors means that it's a four years degree, actually. And the doctorate uh, for PhD, we need a master's degree. There is also a possibility of a direct entry without doing a research master's, but that's uh, rare. And in any case, you should uh, uh, talk uh, with a potential supervisor to go with the direct entry. Uh, for all of our programs, we need a bit of quantitative method, a bit of background in quantitative methods. Uh, so a bit of uh, knowledge because we do have quantitative courses in terms of reference requirements for the graduate diploma and course-based masters we seek two references one of them uh, needs to be an academic reference for the for our mmsc degrees for the graduate diploma both can be from industry but we do prefer academic uh, letters for the research-based programs, we seek three reference letters. Again, academic uh, letters are preferred. For all of our intakes requirements, we need a CV from you. And in supplementary information, we need a statement of purpose uh, for you. So why detailing why you're interested in applying these programs. So as per the supervisor requirements, uh, we, you're not required to determine a supervisor before you, uh, 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 before you apply, but you must be accepted by a supervisor to be admitted for our research-based masters and PhD programs, uh, which means that it, it's better to reach out to your potential supervisors uh, before application. But if, if you reached out and haven't heard back, you can still go ahead and apply. And we will also consider all of the applications that are admitted to our programs. And uh, for all of our programs, we need some English profici proficiency and all of uh, the degrees are in English. So we said 75% or 83%. What does this mean? So in your home country, if you're an international student, there might be different grading schemes. For example, it could be over four, it could be over five. So if you had 3.7 over four, what does it mean? So you can go to this website, admission requirements, and you can check your international grade equivalences uh, through here and see what exactly your grade in your home country 
uh, translates to the grade uh, of our admission requirements. Here, there is also a link to the English language proficiency requirements, which comes back in our next slide. So you are welcome to take a number of tests and each one has a different minimum requirement. For example, if you take the TOEFL, the internet-based TOEFL, we need the 90 and the 25 from writing, 25 from speaking. For IELTS, you need the 7 and a minimum of 6.5 from writing and speaking. And there's other uh, potential tests that you can take for English language proficiency as well. So let's go back to finding a supervisor. So there's more information on this page with this link here on uh, guiding you how to find a supervisor for your research-based master's and PhD studies. Again, you can apply without securing a supervisor and most of the professors in our department go through the applications for all MSc and PhD students if they're going to intake a student. So if you have a good grade average and good references, you are still a strong candidate uh, for being accepted to our programs. But on the other hand, if you want to if you want to study in a specific field, you can reach out to the faculty. And the research areas of the faculty are listed on our website. So the best way to contact to, with them is through an email. So you can send an email attaching your CV or uh, and or transcript and stating why you're interested in working with that particular supervisor. Especially for PhD, I strongly suggest that you reach out to supervisors before applying or after you apply around the same time so that you can let the supervisor know that you're interested in studying with them. Sometimes uh, the sup you might not hear back from the supervisor even though you email them because we do receive a number of emails from a lot of students who wants to join our faculty, who wants to join our department. But please don't get discouraged because all of the applications will be given full consideration. But if the supervisor doesn't respond back to you, it might mean that the supervisor is not in taking any students for the upcoming term or um, might not be interested in your application or might simply be busy to respond and thinking of going through the applications once all of the files are being submitted in the system. Yeah, let's move on to our research areas. Uh, for the graduate diploma in data analytics, it is, I told you, available as a standalone direct entry, just as a diploma. But another possibility is that our MMSC students, our course-based master's students, can earn the same diploma in conjunction with their degree at no extra cost. If they uh, en uh, enroll in these four courses, so these courses are Big Data Analytics, Statistical Methods for Data Analytics, and Operations Analytics, plus another GDIP elective of your choice, and you can uh, complete the four additional courses that you need for the program. So let, recall that you need to complete eight courses for your MMSC degree. And if you take four courses from this GDIP list, then you might be earned a diploma in uh, data analytics as well. Now let's talk more about our research areas, especially for MSc and PhD students. We, we have three basic research areas in our department. The first one is applied operations research, and I'll be talking about that. The second one is information systems, and Professor Smucker will uh, give you more information about our uh, research in this area. And the third one is management of technology, and Professor Kozen will talk more about this area. So let's start with the applied operations research. This is my area of expertise as well. So applied operations research involves data analytics, healthcare analytics, supply chain management, logistics planning and transportation, revenue management and pricing, and uh, energy markets. So let me give you some uh, ideas about what type of research that we're doing in, in these particular applications. I 
My research expertise is on supply chain network design and uh, logistics. So what do I do in this domain is that I, for example, work on uh, locating uh, facilities for efficient delivery. Think about the uh, parcel delivery systems. Think about Amazon, which is a worldwide uh, service. So in Amazon, you make an order for uh, you purchase something and that order needs to reach out to you in this delivery time that they guarantee. So what happens after you click your uh, order button and pay for your order is that there is a network, logistics network, underlying logistics network with some warehouses, inventory holding strategies, making sure that they keep your product in places. And that product is being shipped to you somehow using different modes of transportation in the most efficient way possible. And if you talk about designing this network and making sure that this delivery reaches to you on time, then you're talking an applied operations research problem. So operations research is involved in doing things uh, most efficiently in the uh, in, in possible considering various constraints such as time, money, budget or inventory requirements. So there are a number of colleagues working in healthcare applications in our department as well. For example, they're working on scheduling uh, radioactive ter therapy for cancer patients, or they are working on modeling infectious diseases in hospitals. So how often should you screen the patients in hospitals so that they don't get hospital acquired diseases? Or during COVID times, we have seen a lot of uh, operations research we call OR in short problems where you need to make sure that uh, patients get vaccinated in the in the most effective way possible or they get tested for COVID at the times where there were no rapid tests available so how does we how should we allocate the capacity to these healthcare uh, uh, facilities so that these things are being done again in a short amount of time, minimizing the wasting and minimizing the uh, resource, scarce resources, maximizing the efficiency of utilizing these resources. So uh, let's uh, move on so, uh, to the second problem uh, of our department. Uh, a lot of faculties working on information systems as well. And I give the word to Professor Smucker to talk about that research area. Hello. Yes, uh, we have a strong group of uh, professors working in the area of information systems. And when I think about information systems, uh, particularly in our engineering department, basically the important notion here is that we're actually working on uh, applied research. Uh, we are very concerned with the whole system uh, and its actual usage by people. And so you can kind of think about the information systems uh, in sort of three layers. The outermost layer is concerned with how people interact and utilize these systems. And so we have uh, researchers working on human computer interaction, uh, haptics, uh, all sorts of notions of games and interfaces, and uh, quite a bit of work as well in uh, understanding things such as how do people use search engines? Okay, so that's that sort of, how can we understand the way people uh, utilize our information systems and what can we do to actually improve them for the end user? Uh, and then sort of the next layer down is all of the advanced uh, algorithms and machine learning that uh, drive these systems. And we have a large amount of research there, uh, ranging from you know natural language processing, uh, which involves a lot of deep learning, to people studying just deep learning and its application to other areas as well, such as healthcare and so forth and so on. Uh, and then finally, uh, sort of the bottom layer is, you could view it as necessary for all the upper layers, is the actual uh, ability to manipulate and manage the, the data. And so we have research on the data systems themselves uh, and still also a bit at the algorithm level here uh, actually how can we uh, utilize data for problems in society uh, and so forth but also uh, just the fundamentals such as managing the data data cleaning uh, 
uh, profiling it, and again, uh, applications such as making artificial intelligence much more explainable. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I greatly encourage anyone interested in this area to uh, apply and uh, make make it what your interests known to the the faculty, so that a good match can be found. We have the third one, management of technology. So um, this slide is primarily directed toward. Sorry. Th this slide is directed primarily toward the uh, online program but I can talk to the research areas of our group as well. So I'll just talk about the online program first. Uh, this is just an example of what you would learn uh, in the program, tech strategy, things about new product strategy, business unit strategy, uh, introducing new innovations um, and managing new innovations. Decision-making, that's all about human biases, effects and heuristics, things like uh, the endowment effect, the IKEA effect, um, those kind of things. Technology policy means intellectual property rights, impact of government policy, and impacts of universities, entrepreneurs, and government research on the economy as a whole and on the firm. And then leadership in particular, uh, personal leadership, leading your, your entire organization and managing technical teams. If you look to the bottom there in the green, those four courses correspond to what I just said. Those courses are offered in the online program. And then in terms of the research of my group, uh, myself in particular and my colleagues, the ones that work with me, we deal with tech strategy and technology policy in general. Those are economics and statistics based with a lot of uh, data analysis. Decision making, there's a, another couple colleagues, they deal with human biases, effects, heuristics, etc. They do experiments uh, on humans. Um, sort of like applied psychology. And then uh, the leadership group, um, they, they de deal uh, with another term called organizational behavior, organizational theory, which is all linked up with uh, basically psychology. So um, yes, again, uh, just like what Mark said, uh, the plug is please contact me. I I'll, be, I'll be interested in talking to any of you if you have any interest in this and uh, we can correspond. Thanks, Mark and Brian. So uh, as the fourth step, I'll be talking about tuition and funding. So here is a chart that summarizes all the uh, requirements, tuition requirements. So all of the programs have different tuition and this is summarized in this chart, starting from the graduate diploma in data analytics, full-time, part-time, depending if you're an international student or a Canadian or a, a permanent resident in Canada. And uh, so all of the programs and have different fees per term. One thing I would like to emphasize is that we have three terms per year in the University of Waterloo. And uh, the co-op program has different fees as well for the co-op term. You see a different co-op uh, fee for that particular term. And there are some incidental fees as well. So all of the uh, tuition information uh, can be obtained from this uh, link. And uh, so I won't go into details about this uh, numbers, but what I want to talk about is the uh, next slide that we can have some uh, opportunities for financing your graduate studies. So you can go to this uh, website again to get more information about graduate funding resources. So for uh, MSc and PhD degrees, these are funded, meaning that you'll get some funding uh, for these degrees, which will come again. And there are some mm, teaching assistantship or research assistantship, we call these TA and RA for short options. There are some international supports, uh, international support for uh, international students, support for international students, internal awards for University of Waterloo, which you might be eligible for. There are external awards like the Ontario Graduate Scholarship. There are other bursaries and loans. And uh, so some information, most of the information is summarized for individual cases in this uh, funding scholarships and award web pages. So every individual is different and they might be eligible for different support. But let me go over the generic support that we give. So uh, for the MSA and PhD programs, we provide uh, 
we call GRS funding, Graduate Research Student Funding to you. And these are the amounts that you see as of uh, December 2023. And uh, so an MSc student earns 18,000 per year, but still needs to pay the tuition from this fee. So just to be clear that uh, you get this amount, but pay tuition uh, as uh, detailed in the uh, table that were shown two slides ago and for the PhD you get 26,000 per year and also needs to uh, pay the termly tuition. But we have uh, teaching assistantship options which is in the next slide. So we uh, offer our MSc and PhD students with teaching assistantships as well as our course-based students too. So our TAs typically work 130 hours per term. And uh, so per hour rate is uh, written here, $45.90. Uh, and most of our MSc and PhD students get teaching assistantships, though we cannot commit uh, giving them TAs once they apply, but we do our best to give them TA opportunities. And course, our, some of our course-based students also have the chance to uh, have a TA job during their terms. As I mentioned before, you can have the option of two paid co-op terms, which is available for both MMSC and MASC students. Co-op is regularly not available for PhD students, but I have had a student, PhD student in the past, which went for co-op for a term. This is something that you need to talk with your supervisor and agree on, which is, um, and this is rare because PhD is a more research-oriented degree. For the uh, co-op for the uh, MMSC students, this, this is a classical, the table that you see over here is the, is the schedule. So you come and take some courses in your first term, say if, if you start in fall, and then continue with taking more courses in the winter term. And in spring, you for four months, you go on a co-op, which is paid, and then you do another co-op in fall and come back and finish your degree in term three in winter. And you earn valuable experience. and. Our co-op students get uh, in-demand roles in industry, leading to well-paying and fulfilling career, uh, careers. And then you see the job titles of our uh, MMSC students uh, who took uh, co-op option. They have been hired as a business system analyst, data analyst, as a data scientist. And these jobs are really in-demand jobs uh, among the top 20 uh, jobs that's been in demand in industry actually currently. So the next step is to apply. So to apply to our programs, you need to go to this website and follow the procedure. You need to make sure that you have all the uh, things, all the files necessary for your application. You need to submit your references and you can find all the information there on how to apply. Uh, you just need to follow the steps. So if you have questions about the specific program, we will answer the questions in the uh, chat in a bit. But if you have specific questions even after that, for the MMSC program, you can direct your questions to Kimberly Dunn. And for research-based MSc and PhD programs, you can send your emails to Lisa Handel. And also for the online programs, you can send your emails to Kim. Kim, Kim so thank you so much. Uh, this is a full explanation of the department and graduate studies. You have all the information required. Uh, what are the programs? What are the requirements? How much does it cost? How do I find the supervisor? And how do I apply? <laughs> so it looks like a like a maybe a, a long process, but you just have to get into it, get the requirements and apply to be part of the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Waterloo. I would like, I have been sharing all the time uh, many links, but I just want to share my screen and show you. This is the graduate studies students page. So over here, you have a section for programs. If you missed the kind of programs that we have, uh, all the guide for research and supervisors, all the full explanation about funding, scholarships and awards, a section for international students with uh, where we were talking before about the um, English requirements 
and the equivalence of grades for international students, how it is in life for current students, of course, all the services that you will have access to. That's something that uh, you, you need to consider when you're thinking about graduate studies. Uh, how is going to be your life? <laughs> Athletics, recreation, clubs, associations, food. Uh, we have several events and info sessions and you can always request more information. And let's answer some of the questions that we still have in the chat. Red one is asking, when the four courses completed in the PhD program will entitle students for GD certification? No, as far as I know, that's not possible, but you are, you can take these four uh, courses uh, in addition to your program. Yeah, you can take these four courses as well. As for the graduate diploma, I don't think that is available for PhDs, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, maybe also you can contact Lisa. Yes, that would be nice. Sana is asking, can we compensate our English test result with our GPA or writing essay? For example, if we have an overall seven in IELTS, but we got six in writing, uh, what can we do for that? If you don't satisfy the minimum requirements, I think you will need to take some English courses. This has happened to me in the past with some enrollments that some of my students needed to take extra English courses. So this might be a possibility. You can go ahead and apply. And then depending on your current situation, we might uh, recommend you some taking some English courses in your offer letter. There are also Sana. Here is a page that uh, we just shared with you, the, the page for, uh, for international students over here. So you will see the English requirements and if you don't satisfy that, that for example, you can consider the English for Academic Success program, uh, the EFAS program. So I will advise you to see that as well. For PH, Chris is asking, for, P, for a PhD supervisor, research areas, is there anyone working on challenges in organizing the managing technology projects, IT project management? Well, the only person I could think of is potentially Ken McKay. I'm not sure if he's accepting uh, graduate students currently. Um, I, do, I do know that uh, Ada Hurst uh, is working with a student and they're studying uh software engineering and the way teams work and things along those lines all right so that's an okay. example thanks mark so so ham is asking can i see guidance from professors regarding what course might be the most appropriate for me yes of course uh all, for all of my students we go through which courses that they can take they should take and we decide on the courses together uh, so that's, yes, that's possible. Following the same questions about courses, Danielle is asking, is it possible to enroll in courses before the start of a program? For example, taking courses in the summer for a program that starts in the fall? Uh, you need to be a UORA student to be to enroll in courses. So I'm afraid that won't be possible without uh, getting accepted to the program. So you have to be here. <laughs> Application deadlines, here they are. Uh, Summer is asking about it. So just remember six months before the beginning of the term and if it's for management of technology, uh, MMSC online management of technology program, uh, those are the dates a little bit more flexible. What are the quant quant quantitative methods courses you mentioned it earlier? So we had the uh, graduate diploma courses listed there and uh, yeah, okay. so all of our courses are actually available uh, on our website. So we offer a lot of courses in different programs. So you can go to any one of the programs if you click on uh, there, Maria, or in the programs page, go to the uh, MMSC or any other thing. And then from there, there should be a link to the courses. These are the courses that uh, are that can be offered in our programs. Let's say not all courses are offered for every term, and uh, not all the courses in this list are offered. But the required courses are offered, uh, and you can see the required courses for each of the programs again uh, on our web pages. So for the MMSC program, you can see that we have 603, 605, 609. If you can go down a little bit, 
uh, you can see that these are the required courses for that degree and the course descriptions you can go to the link that maria show and for the course offerings you can go to go to the graduate calendar um is there any difference between fall and winter intakes in terms of which courses are being offered that's the only difference i would say <laughs> so if you come in the winter term different courses are being offered than in fall term and we guarantee that we offer the mass courses if you're talking about it depends on which program that you're talking if you're talking about the course based degree then these mass courses are usually offered in the fall terms for your convenience and also if you're talking about the co-op it might be difficult yeah, it, you have to have an individual uh, course path but i cannot tell uh, which courses that you want to take or which courses are offered for in which terms um can we apply to both research based and the course based at the same time yes you can yes and you can apply you can apply the co-op program and the course based programs at the same time as well as we said there's a direct entry for mmsc co-op uh, reference letters i don't know how it works that you that for each of these uh, the same letters uploaded in the system i i don't know how the reference letter mechanism is can we please learn more on applied operations research projects that students with transportation industry experience can pursue in a PhD program? So that's a, that's a very specific question. What I would suggest is for the student to go to each of the relevant faculties web pages to see what they're currently working on. So I'm working on the transportation industry, for example, with an industry partner, Ribbit, we're working on autonomous airplanes and how to design network for autonomous airplanes. On a similar project, we worked on locating charging stations for electric vehicles. So each professor is working on a number of projects. Uh, and the best way to learn more about this is to go to the individual professor's website and also go through their recent publications. That's also a nice way of learning about what they're doing currently. Here, for example, I will show you when you click let's say here in supply change and management and logistics, there is a link so you can find more the professors related. You to can go, term. for example, to my website, personal web page, if you can go to the... So here I'm working, if you click on projects at the top, you can see what projects that I'm working on currently. That's also a good guidance in my opinion. At the top, yeah, see? Yes, here it is. You have to see Design of Mm -hmm. the the profile of the professor, all the publications, and here normally it says if you are either currently considered application for graduate studies or not. Uh, so Ham is asking, in my previous question, I meant to say programs instead of courses. I'm not sure which program will be appropriate for me. Can I seek guidance to select the program in which I will have the best chance to get in? <laughs> So it depends on your academic credentials, of course. You can get in touch with uh, Kim or Lisa, but if you're not research interested in research, then perhaps send an email to Kim with your credentials. But we cannot say which program that you have the highest probability of getting in. Uh, you have to satisfy the minimum admission requirements and uh, it depends on various factors. That's, yes. So you need to uh, apply before we can make a final decision. <laughs> yeah, it's your your choice. Are you interested in research? One of the research studies are needed in the department, or you not much? <laughs> you just want to take the courses. So so also like a personal decision. So you get to know the programs, the admission requirements, how it works, and then you can see with what you feel more identified. Like if the student doesn't have an engineering degree, uh, that's okay. Yes, they science, can apply. Exactly. Do they yeah, have it's, it's, we just need a little bit of background in quantitative methods and science would satisfy that requirement, in my opinion. We just have two last questions. If students applying for a PhD program comes from business school background, can they apply for the PhD program? Yes, they can apply. So if for to be admitted to a PhD program, the supervisor should they agree to work with you. So some supervisors uh, might uh, seek knowledge uh, from your previous program. It might be okay for them to work with you. So thank you so much for your time. Sibel, Mark, 
Brian, I'm very sure that you were able to guide and help many of the students that attended this session. And of course, if you are watching this session also later on, um, I'm sure you are able to guide them and see how they can be part of the Department of uh, Management Science and Engineering in the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Waterloo. We hope to see you all soon. <laughs> Go ahead, check the programs, the requirements, money, and apply. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye now. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending. Bye, everybody.